Hello appraisers, this is Brandon with Spark for Appraisers, and I'm making this video to help you feel comfortable about the results, about what data you should use, because obviously of utmost importance is that you understand the tool that you're using, and not only do you understand it, but you know how to use it properly to develop credible results. So let's go ahead and get into it. The first major question that we get is, how do I choose the right data? Unfortunately, there's no perfect or hard and fast set of rules you can use to always get the data that will lead to the best adjustment. But there are some general guidelines and rules that I would recommend you follow that will help you get credible results. And by the way, there is a way for you to actually demonstrate the adjustment, though, and the credibility of that by just applying the sensitivity analysis method, which is basically load that adjustment into your grid if the comps get further apart that means that's probably not the right adjustment to use if they get closer together your adjusted prices at the bottom of your grid that means that adjustment probably is a good one to use okay so how do you choose the right data let's get into my mls and take a look what i've done here is i've drawn using the polygon feature neighborhood boundaries i would encourage you to use the same neighborhood boundaries that you use in your own appraisal report for the particular subject that you're looking at and narrow it down to competing properties. And then some of you will say, well, what's a competing property? Well, again, that's something that you need to decide as the expert in your area. I can't tell you what's a competing property in your market because I have no idea. So in a lot of markets, it's narrowing it down to a certain GLA range, maybe looking at lot size, the style, whatever it is in your area, use that you're the expert i can't tell you that part but what i can say is narrow it down to what you deem to be a competing property most likely that will be the best set of data to use if you're doing a good job narrowing it down to competing that's probably the best now there are caveats to that and there are other ways of looking at things so one caveat is you could also further it further narrow it down to not just all the competing properties but even narrow it down further to the absolute best most competing properties so maybe no variation in bathroom count no variation in parking spaces or whether it has a pool or not but just the absolute most similar narrow it down to that and try using that as well in synapse we do allow you to have up to three data sets so you might want to just try different things out because narrowing it down to the absolute most competing property, which might only be 10, 8, 13, whatever, it might be some really small number, but that might also give you the best adjustment for GLA and lot size. At least in my market, that happens a lot. Now, it might not help you at all with a bathroom adjustment because those properties that are absolutely the best, most competing are probably all the same bathroom count, or they might all have the same parking two-car garage, or um, maybe they all have the same view, or they all have a swimming pool, or whatever. My point in saying that is they won't help you with getting an adjustment for that because they're so similar to your subject that you can't, there's not enough data there to help you get that adjustment. But they may be very enough in GLA and lot size that it does help you get a really good idea of what that adjustment would be. So you might want to use it for that. But again, might not be helpful for those other adjustments that you might need to get. And then you also could get rid of all the parameters that helped you define a competing property and just open it up to, let's say, all single family homes in your defined neighborhood boundaries. Because while that may not help you develop the most accurate adjustment for bathroom count, parking type, it might help you develop that rare view adjustment. Maybe not many properties that are competing have the view that your subject has. So you have to open it up to the broader defined neighborhood boundaries, all of those properties. Or if you're doing a condo, all the condos in the defined neighborhood boundaries. But again, you still got to be careful because if it does help you get an adjustment for whatever the view is, let's say an, an ocean view, then that's nice, but if those properties are all way higher quality or superior location, then those results that you're getting for that adjustment might be skewed high. So instead of maybe for your subject, it should be a $20,000 adjustment. Maybe for those properties, it's a $100,000 view adjustment. So just be careful that you're not opening it up to properties that are so different than your subject that even though it helps you develop that adjustment, it's way too high. 
so so far we've covered all competing properties that's one only the most competing the most similar that's two but then you're narrowing it down to only a few a few properties opening it up to all of the single family detached properties in your defined neighborhood boundaries that's a third option and then a fourth option would be maybe go find like maybe right here I'm just kind of making this up, but maybe here in this area, it's not within your defined neighborhood boundaries, but there's a very similar neighborhood that has very similar competing properties that sell for the same price, same quality, all that kind of stuff. Maybe you go do a search in that and load that in as one of your data sets, because that might help you. Maybe these properties, many of them have that same view. And so you want to go into there and that will help you develop that view adjustment. So that's a fourth way of searching for data where you can use that data set within Synapse to help you develop an adjustment. Okay, so those are our different methods. I would recommend using one of those. Uh, absolutely, I would encourage you every single time, regardless, definitely use whatever you're defining as a competing property, as one of your data sets. Absolutely, every time, use that. It will help you with the majority of the adjustments. Maybe not all of them, but the majority. And again, in Synapse, you can load in up to three data sets. So but among those three data sets, you should be good to go. Now, before we move on, there is the question of how many properties do you have to have in a data set? A lot of people were taught you absolutely have to have at a minimum 30. That is not true. It's a bit of a long discussion. I already have a detailed video that covers this, so I'm just going to link that down below. So please go check out that video. I believe the discussion that you want to look at in the video starts at 17 minutes and 30 seconds. Again, I will. Hopefully in the link below, it'll take you right to the correct spot in that video where I start talking about it. But 30 is not the hard and fast rule, even though many people were taught that it's not. So anyways, go check that out. And then last, how many data sets do you need is another question. Do I got to have three? Do I need to use all three? Is one enough? The answer is yes and no and maybe. So I would absolutely, like I said before, no matter what one of your data sets, whether you use one, two, or three, you should use this one, which is all the competing properties in your defined neighborhood boundaries. And draw those neighborhood boundaries in your MLS the same way you define them in your appraisal report. So if you say bounded by the University Drive on the west at Gilbert Road, et cetera, et cetera, do it the same way. Don't just use the radius search. You're going to either get properties you don't want or not get properties you, you do want. So use the polygon method of searching. And that's it for this. Oh, no. As far as the actual number, again, it just varies. The competing properties one may be all that you need. Uh, it, however, if you have an odd adjustment, your subject property or one of your comps, that's a great comp, but it has this weird feature. If you've got to adjust for it, you may not have the necessary data to develop a credible adjustment here in your competing properties. Maybe you need to expand it out to the entire neighborhood, not just the competing properties, but all the single family homes or all the condos in those boundaries. Or maybe you need to go find, like I said before, that neighborhood up here that's outside your neighborhood boundaries, but it's a very, very similar neighborhood. Define your competing properties in there, assuming similar price point and things like that, then yes, maybe you need to go use that. Obviously, it's not as ideal as using these, but it's better than nothing. And also, if you use all the properties you're in your defined neighborhood boundaries, make sure that if you have to rely on that for an adjustment, that there's nothing else confounding the results. Like those aren't homes aren't all way superior quality or superior location. Okay, I think that really is it. Thanks for watching and we will see you on the next one. I'll have at least one or two more videos covering things regarding Synapse to hopefully make you feel more comfortable using it and comfortable that it's providing credible results. Thanks for watching.